Oh, okay. Welcome everybody to Not Taking Orders, live. Live. <laughs> it's six-ish. You're, uh, it looks like you're just here with me. Susan's grabbing her cocktail because you know we can't do this show without a cocktail. But we actually have a really special guest with us today. Uh, we are live streaming with Larry Trask. We're going to be actually doing both programs side by side, Toot Sweet, uh, Not Taking Orders, as well as Larry's program. And uh, Larry, we're doing something special today because usually Larry has cocktail hour on Tuesday, uh, but he's making a, a special arrangement for us and allowing us to do it on Monday. So I'm really excited. Excited about that. Larry, do you want to tell us about the cocktail of today? The cocktail of today is a very special holiday cocktail. Now, what qualifies it as a holiday cocktail? I'm not exactly sure. Maybe just the name. It's called the Bullet Holiday Brew, and it's made in the following manner. You take about an ounce and a half of bullet bourbon, or you could use rye, I suppose, if you like that. Uh, and then the juice, the recipe calls for the juice of an eighth of a fresh lemon, but don't measure an eighth of a lemon. Just squeeze some lemon in there, however much you like. And then apple cider is another ingredient. You can have that hot or chilled, whichever, whichever you prefer. And just throw that into a, a glass, a rocks glass, with some ice and garnish with, a, oh, a cinnamon stick. That's what makes it fancy, cinnamon so stick. Do I just drop the cinnamon stick in? I don't have to do anything, like get oh, yeah. lighted or toasted or anything kind of magical? You could swizzle it around a little. That would be nice. Okay. I mean, it smells fantastic. So I would say that the cinnamon perhaps makes it holiday, but I would pair it with Christmas cookies, which thankfully I have here, so that's why it's holiday for me. So, Larry, tell me a little bit, because this is kind of interesting. So the so as I understand it, the first time that radio was live-streamed was 1996. We, yeah, KHUM was kind of in the vanguard of, of streaming. We hooked up with a company that was doing it uh, back in the way early days of the Internet and has since uh, is, is since defunct like many early Internet startups. Uh, but there were maybe 10 or so radio stations streaming back in the old days. And it was before the, the, they imposed a bunch of fees on it, and it was kind of a free-for-all like the Internet itself in the early days. And it was exciting for us because... People heard it. I mean, it was exciting to reach audiences all over the world. I mean, we're, we're a local radio station, and we focus on Humboldt County. But it was it was fun to have people in Malaysia listening, and you know, we got emails from people in Turkey saying, "Oh, I love the station." So it was uh, it, it was it was very exciting for us. That's incredible. So tell me a little bit about your station, because I've never done anything in radio, and as I understand it, you have a free-form station. What does that mean? Well, it's it's one of the very few free-form stations left. KSAN, if you're familiar with it, was a station in, in San Francisco that was sort of the, the, the godfather of all free-form stations. What it means, in essence, is that there's no playlist. The, the DJs program their own shows, and as long as the song doesn't have uh, some FCC naughty words in it, we can play it. There's nobody saying what you can play and what you can't play. We can play requests. We can do uh, anything, in the, and it's programmed live. And that is, unfortunately, very different from how a lot of radio stations work these days. So it's, 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 it's a, an honor to be on a, a radio station where you can program your own show, although I have to admit there are some times when I'm, I think I have played every song I know. <laughs> Tell me, give me a playlist. Tell me what <laughs> That sounds like that makes you pretty powerful then as a DJ if you kind of get to control your own destiny. How did you get into that? Pure, well, almost pure luck. I had no radio experience before I got this job. I had moved up here from the Bay Area and was actually out of work, and I was selling my CDs to pay the rent. And I heard this radio station called KM that I love to listen to. Uh, they advertise for an office position, so just billing and, and filing and things like that, and so I needed a job. I, I, I went down to interview for it, and during the interview, they told me, now, if you're thinking that you're going to kind of shoehorn your way on the air, uh, we're telling you right now, forget it, because this is an office job, and it's always going to be an office job, and that is the end of the story, and then within about six months, I was on the air. And and this is after be, this is Susan. Hi, I was dealing with our audio Hi, issues <laughs> with the with the first ever simulcast with Toot Sweet and K Hum. Hope many more. But um, hey, so but this is all after you were a law professor at UC Berkeley Holt School of Law, correct? 
Well, now I'm a professor. I worked for UC Berkeley School of Law. Yeah, I ran a program uh, on intellectual property law, but I wasn't a professor. I was uh, I put together conferences and organized things for the students and, and uh, stuff like that. Oh, that like sounds that. better. Yeah, it actually does. Like the guy that actually did a lot of work. <laughs> I know. I wanted to be a lawyer once one time, Larry. I'm so glad I decided to be a cook, and I think everybody else who has met me is really glad for that as well. Uh, so I think it's... I'm still kind of fixated on this concept uh, of this freeform station. So if you get to control your own content, I mean, being in Humboldt, do you get really involved in the community? Or, or what do you do to create content for your show? Well, we, we try to be very connected to, to the community in Humboldt. And it's a, it's a really small area. So I think that a radio station can have more of a meaning uh, mm -hmm. to the people here because, it, you know, we're all, we're all kind of in this together. And there's a there's a much more sort of community feeling across the area than there would be in a, a larger metropolitan area. So we you know we in addition to playing music we keep you know we keep an eye on storms coming through and make sure people know about that and road closures and emergencies and things. And to generate uh, ideas for what songs to play, I really key it on in addition to the requests I get. What's going on right now? Mm -hmm. You know, like if it's raining. I'll probably play a whole bunch of rain songs during the day. If it's a beautiful day, I'll, I'll play songs about sunshine or, you know, just something that's going on in the community. I'll try to build a show around that. What's really cool about also with, with uh, KHAM is if you've ever been to the Northern California Redwoods, this is the only station you can get on your radio for, like, many, many miles. Wow. <laughs> so you have a captive audience. <laughs> Pretty much, it's yes. It's great. So my question is, so if you're not – giving a, a playlist, how does a station like that make revenue? I, I will answer that question in just a second. I'm going to have to actually talk on the radio for okay. a moment. So All right, we're going to let you can, go with it. All right. You can eavesdrop if you'd like. We're going to have a sip of our cocktail. Yeah. I know. I actually really enjoy this holiday cocktail, which is that interesting is because I'm not a bourbon right. person. Old oh, Blue Eyes, I believe he's called. That's, uh, that is Old Devil Moon. Also, Ella Fitzgerald, that's that with All Right With Me, and we heard uh, other Ella Fitzgerald song by Cousin in Milwaukee, and also Frank. So it's a Frank and Nella set. That was, uh, we started off with a song called It Happened in Monterey. You're listening to The Cocktail Hour, live here on k Hump. It's radio without the rules, simulcast with our friends. Love it. Uh, too sweet. And if that doesn't mean anything to you, go to khum.com and click the link, and you can, you can find out what's going on there. I'm going to take a short break. And we'll be right back. Lots more cocktail music coming up here on K-Hum. <laughs> nice job. Yeah. <laughs> 13 years. 13 years of experience right there. We're enjoying your cocktail uh, very much here, Larry. Yes, we are. I, I'm jealous. I'm watching you guys drink it. And it's, <laughs> I'm wishing I had one here. I've got uh, I've got apple juice in a cup. It's not the same. Oh, as, no, uh, it's definitely not the same. No, I actually, I had to make it twice. So... Uh, I, I was a chef in, in my past life, and I'm not very good at measuring, which is why I don't bake. So the first cocktail that I made for Susan, I think I put way too much bourbon in it. You'll notice there's a difference between how uh, we're the enjoying color. our cocktail <laughs> yeah. and the color <laughs> and the aroma as well. Uh, but this is actually really great mm. because I think you get a lot of balance. I actually get a lot out of that cinnamon stick, and I thought I would have to do yeah. something with it, you know, grate it or, or add sizzle. some heat or something. But it actually infuses a lot of flavor into it. So so I'm really excited because cocktails are one of my favorite things. I have a couple of questions for you, Christina, if you, oh, if you wouldn't mind. I'm, I'm very interested. I, I was looking on your on your resume and your bio, and I uh -oh. saw that you That's had been... That's the Wikipedia uh, one, right? Uh-oh. Well, we'll probably need that, that one. And, <laughs> and totally. the one at the winery. All and, right. And it, 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 I noted that you had training at, at two CIAs, not just one. And I'm interested if you're if someone is setting out to become a chef and that what they want that's what they want to do. They want to become a head chef. Mm -hmm. How important is it to have that sort of formal training as opposed to kind of learning on the job at restaurants? Oh goodness, I you know I'm I'm really not sure how to answer that because I think that culinary school you're going to get out of it what you put into it, um, but I learned a lot of basics in culinary school. But definitely working an actual job is where I got a lot more life skills. So I was really fortunate uh, when I was starting out. I apprenticed for Larry Forgione, who is called the Godfather of American cuisine. Um, nobody really remembers him now, but they do remember free range chicken. He's the first person to coin that phrase. Um, and Larry told me that 
Uh, the best thing that I could do to further my culinary career was to go and work for the best chef that would take me. And so that's what I did. And it worked pretty well for me, I think. I, one, one thing that, that I've, you know, I've, I've always been fascinated by people who work in restaurant kitchens. I've always been intimidated and it's never been anything that I felt like I could do because I'm, I'm, I'm chicken. Mm -hmm. But from reading like Kitchen Confidential and watching Gordon Ramsay's show, uh, someone with whom you are familiar, mm -hmm. it seems like that's a fairly difficult environment, a, a no compromise environment where things are happening extremely quickly and people are not like nobody's there to sort of help you if you get in trouble. You're you're on your own and and you 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 sink or, or rise on your own merits. Is is my impression correct? I would say that that's absolutely correct. I mean, we say in the kitchen that the cream rises to the top, um, and it is stressful because everything in a kitchen is a weapon. All of it can hurt you. You can cut yourself. You can burn yourself. You can hurt the people that are working next to you. Um, so you have to be kind of aware of your space, and you can hurt your guests as well with, you know, foodborne illness and contamination. So it is, but it's, you know, just like any other artist, if you really love what you're doing, it's completely worth it. Right. Isn't it hard to, I mean, and I, I don't want to monopolize this well, questions about the kitchen. I'm very fascinated with it. It seems like the hardest thing would be, coordinating the time for all of the different things that you've got going on and getting it all the kind of, I mean, that's hard for me when I cook in my, in my kitchen. It must be extra hard in a restaurant. Are, are chefs better at multitasking than any other person on the planet? Well, women, I think, are better at multitasking than anybody else on the planet. Uh, and that, uh, <laughs> clearly, are, are you, are you, are everybody you in the audience Dede? agrees. Um, no. So, Didi is a single tasker. Yes. Uh, I think everyone agrees. <laughs> Oh, so I'm so he glad I have. Like this is the oh, first time I've heard a uh, reaction from our studio audience. No, um, so <laughs> women, and I can, I'll back this up with facts, right? Okay, so men are hunters, women are gatherers. So men go out and they hunt. That is a single objective. And the women, we have to gather. So we're like, okay, is this poisonous? Can I eat this? What do I do? I got to gather this. I got to get this ready. Oh, I got to get ready for the man who's out there hunting. Get ready to cook it and bring it back. And I think that a part of that kind of carries on with us. So once we get into the kitchen, the timing becomes second nature. When you've done something 300 times, you have an internal clock that goes ding, salmon's done. Uh, but you have to remember everything else because you're never going to just cook one plate like you do at home. So you have to go ding, salmon's done, fries are coming up, this plate's coming out, hot plates, let's oh, go yeah. with this, this is ready, uh, okay, what's coming up? homework. Mm -hmm. um, Answer the doorbell, the UPS guy's here. Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. yeah, it's a balancing yeah. act. Um, so we're great multitaskers, uh, we're good at time management, uh, and we can cook. So all around, I would say that we're really great people to be around. Sorry, that was very <laughs> opinionated. Again, we got some uh, interesting, Just, Larry, I don't know if you could hear the feedback. Are you a single or a multitasker? I, I, in this, I think by my nature, I'm kind of a single tasker, but I, in this in this particular job, though it's not quite as hectic as a restaurant kitchen, there's a bunch of stuff going on. Phones are ringing. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to pick the next song. I'm getting uh, email requests for different songs, and, and I'm trying to keep, I'm watching the clock at all times and trying to make sure everything's on time. So I'm mm -hmm. forced to be a multitasker against my will. So I love that you have email requests or uh, phone requests. I, I read something the other day about phone requests for the radio. Do the people know about the internet? Like, you know yeah, I mean? there there are uh, requests come in in a, a number of different ways. The phone is the old, you know, the old way. People also uh, email requests in, mm -hmm. and then at any time I'm on the air, I probably have five or six chat windows open with various different people who are listening and making requests and commenting on the things that I say, and or or that. I don't say, and they want me to. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, <laughs> I love it. The internet, yeah. the internet is very much a part of what we do now. So, so what? But they could probably Google the song that they want to hear and play it, right? Oh, I yeah, right, exactly. And I sometimes but they want the community of of having you talk about it and being engaged with you. I think that's right. I, I think sometimes people request songs because they're driving and they really want to hear the song. But also sometimes they request songs because they think it's an awesome song and they want to share it. Like they want to be part, partially programming. Yeah. Or maybe they just want to hear the sound of their own voice on the radio. That was me when I was a kid. <laughs> so it, You'd never believe that I now, would be you? I'd like sweaty, like really scared when it's like, oh yeah, you're coming on. Turn off your radio so that we can hear. I'm like, 
No, I don't want to. Oh, do no. It's so oh. scary. It's scary. It, do you find that? People, how are people on the radio there? Are they used to it or do they get like a little bit of stage fright? It, it varies. Uh, we take a lot of, I take a lot of calls live on the air. Uh, so if someone's calling in and I happen to have the microphone open and, and I'm talking, I'd like taking that call live on the air for the spontaneity. So sometimes people yeah. kind of handle it because they're used to it. Other times it's just silence. And that's when I know, okay, they don't want to talk on the air. But I, I understand it. I mean, I never, I, I could never listen to my own show. You know, I, I, if I had to actually hear what I sound like, I'm sure I would go into a, a deep funk and never be on the radio again. Oh, I don't think that that's quite true. But, well, so, Larry, do you, you cook? I, I, yes, after a fashion, I love cooking and I love food, and uh, I'm, I'm, a, but I, I'm a recipe follower. I'm not, I, I'm not a creative type of person who can just get handed some ingredients and come up with something. Uh, but I do love to cook and I do it all the time. Nice. Do you have and anything that you do? You clearly do? love cocktails. I'm a cocktail man. What, yes. What's the origination of your fascination with cocktails? Did you, were you ever, I, if I missed the first part of the show, I apologize. Did, were you ever a bartender? I was like working with these audio, the audio <laughs> issues that just happened after all of our successful testing. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Yes. Uh, well, that's something I've always I've always wanted to be in my in my fantasy life. But again, I I, I feel like that might be something that I I would not be particularly suited for. However, I have spent a lot of time on the other side of the bar. I hence am. my and that's where and I so, met you ten right over ten years ago. Wow. I actually left Humboldt County ten years ago next year. Wow. And I knew Larry before that. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow, well, that's a long time friend. ago. I know. Isn't it weird? Are we that old? No. No. I, no. no. Young at heart. Well, yeah. I, I, I think spending... It's not exactly the same, Larry. Well, <laughs> I haven't changed my voice as much as I... As, as much as my hair is a different color now. Yeah. I, you know, I think my interest in cocktails came from actually being on the other side of the bar and wanting to you know, wanting to, to vary things and see what, what they have mm -hmm. and finding the different flavors and the different, you know, drinks that would accompany different dishes and things I was preparing. I mean, there's as much variation in the cocktail world as in the, the culinary world. So, Christina, do you think that cocktail pairing with food is more difficult than wine pairing? I don't know if it's more difficult, but I would say it's different. Um, mixology has definitely in the past decade become, you know, a, a huge expertise. Um, and what I've seen people doing with pairing is things like, I don't know, Larry, have you ever done any fat washing with any spirits? Fat washing? All right. So, uh, being trained in, in, in French cooking, uh, we use a lot of fat. So for Sounds me, good. this is awesome. But it's things like where you would take your bullet bourbon, right? And you take something like bacon fat when it's in its liquid form, and you add it into the bourbon bottle, and then you shake it up, right? And then you put it into the freezer, and the fat solidifies. And you strain the fat out, but it infuses it with just a little bit of bacon flavor. So I've seen people do that oh, with different kinds of okay, spirits yeah. and duck to fat. And then with bacon, a, yeah. a, a spirit with bacon, of course, you right. have to. Yeah, absolutely. And then I've seen them pair that with a dish that has bacon oh, yeah. in it. So you've got bacon, bacon, and more is more. So that makes me happy because I love bacon. But I've seen a lot of that happening. That sounds good with this. Boy. Yes. That sounds bullet and bacon. Mm -hmm. We need to come up with some more stuff with that. We bullet should. Bullet and bacon. And it is bacon season. Oh, yeah. It so. is bacon season. You, it is. <laughs> yeah, Susan, we tried that once at, at a restaurant that you're very familiar with up here. Really? Although we didn't. We didn't use your technique of the fat washing. Uh -huh. We just put bacon in the bourbon and in let it sit bourbon. for like a week. <laughs> that works too. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you, you, you can do like a bacon rim um, with bacon bits because that would be delicious. But I'm starting to digress. Like home so. bacon bits, homemade bacon bits. Yeah. How would you make a homemade bacon bit? Well, you make bacon. And then you crumble it. And then you chop it into bits. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's like a real real kind of bacon bit. That's how I would do it. But you have to cook it like <laughs> all the way. Make, how do you, uh, Kids ask sometimes, how do you make peanuts? What? How do you get them in the shell? You don't do that. I know. No, I know. 
kids ask that from time to time. Really? Yeah, how do they make these cool snacks? <laughs> so anyway, sorry. I asked you how to make bacon bits, but obviously. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. People do that. So it's really exciting. <laughs> Man, I want to go home now and make some bacon bourbon drinks. <laughs> nice. There you go. They pair really well. So um, I actually, so while we're talking about bacon, Larry, um, since your camera is working and you can see us, you've got an advantage. So I brought in, because it's the holiday season, um, and I have no idea what to get anybody for Christmas. So I brought in some fun things that I wanted to share with you. If you wanted to take on cooking a little bit more or you have some friends that love to cook, I brought some fun things that everybody can't be without. So are you ready? I am ready. Okay, so I'm going to, this is actually everything that I'm giving away for Christmas. So I'm kind of spoiling things here. But Larry, I'm going to go through things and you can say keep or pass. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start with my favorite thing. So knives, right? As you know, as a chef, you need really good knives, and these are not what I would use professionally, but how fun are they? They're Kunriken, they're Swiss, they're carbon steel, they stay sharp forever, and you can have one to match every outfit. Do you see this? You know, I mean, what do you, get? what do you get the person that awesome. has everything? Um, awesome knives. Awesome. I Keep her pass. Really, I'm... That is 100% key. That okay. is it's awesome. Key. All right. So we'll stay on this kind of same there's line. There's polka dots. There's leopard. There's zebra. There's everything. I'm so excited. I bought one of each. and a pairing knife. And Amazing. They come in all different colors, now, right? You and can get uh, Christina's shopping list on Amazon, which we will be posting mm -hmm. if this show oh. actually ever makes it to, like, an archive, which is my problem because of the audio issues. Uh, anyway, right. Go ahead. Cool. Okay, so next item, same company that made it. I don't think we're... Speed peelers. They're the easiest things to use. They're called speed peelers because they save you time, and they're so cheap. They're like three bucks. Keep or pass? Well, it's going to be hard for me to pass on kitchen gadgets because I'm, I'm a big fan, so that's a keeper. Okay, awesome. So if you're a big fan of kitchen gadgets, this is going to blow your mind because something you don't know about me, I'm really lazy and I hate to wash the dishes. So I got this new thing. So I make a lot of things where you have to strain because I love making pasta or blanching vegetables. And I have to get my colander out. And then it takes up all this room in the dishwasher. So I got this thing, right? And it's a clip-on strainer that clips onto your pan. And then you can strain it. And then you only have this tiny thing to put in the dishwasher. Keep or pass? Oh, my God. That My world has just changed. This That's is the best, thing. isn't it? This is my new favorite toy. So see, so far nothing has been regifted, and I'm really excited about that. Um, so one last gadget. We're going to go a little old school. Uh, potato ricer, right? So makes the best mashed potatoes. You cook your potato, you put it in here, and then you smash it, and it comes through these holes, and it stays really light and fluffy. Uh, keep or pass? Well, now just for me personally, I'm a I'm a chunky mashed potato man. Oh, so I wouldn't pass. I wouldn't rise mine, so regretfully I'd pass. Okay. But that's just a personal preference. All right, all right. So you're off the hook with gadgets. So uh, a lot of the folks on but my... if you have, like, so-called mother-in-law or someone like that, you, yeah, you know... You can also put fruit in there and smash it if you wanted to, like, oh. you know, make a puree of something. Oh, there you but, go. Um, okay, so uh, go ahead. Yeah, that's right. I, I wasn't thinking of that. There probably are other purposes for that besides just yeah, rice and potatoes. So what kind of fruit would you use for that? Oh, my goodness. Anything that you want to mash. Now so I'm getting I always think that's of, a big, like... That's a big drawer item. Right. So it takes up a lot of space. In right. The drawer. True. But what else could you... I, I, obviously, it's a potato. We have potato. a question from our studio audience. I was wondering if... We'll restate the question. Yeah. He's far, long, far away. Yeah. Long, different diameter holes. Ah. So... The question was, ah. if you if if they make potato ricers with different caliber sized holes, or so uh, if you want to do a bullet a bullet of um, yeah, if you want to do different sizes, so typically like they okay. don't, but it is removable for cleaning. So I'm sure that you I like can find the, I like part. yours, the removability. Yeah, it makes it cleaner. Uh, but you, usually you're going to want to make a really kind of nice homogenous puree, so you're going to want a smaller hole. But uh, Susan was asking me the kind of fruit that I would stick in. Yeah. So 
So the kind of fruit that you're going to want to stick through something like this, it's going to be something that's easy. You're not going to put an apple in here because it's not going anywhere. But a cooked apple, yeah. if you wanted to make homemade applesauce, would work. Uh -huh. I like using fresh strawberries in the summer, and then I make a cocktail out of them. Uh, but really, anything that's kind of soft, you could put through here. Pomegranate. I was thinking strawberries, as you said. Oh, yeah. pomegranate juice. Because pomegranate seeds. You can juice a pomegranate seed. I hate the seeds. Like, Absolutely. Just, I know you can eat shrimp shells. I know you can eat pomegranate seeds. It's just not right to me. So pomegranates, you can it's make pomegranate juice, so it works really well. Teasy feel. So know. I'm going to go through the rest of my list. I'm going to go really fast. Larry, I've got a lot of people on my list that don't live here in Northern California. Larry, right? do you have to go back to your t uh, radio show? In, in one minute and 30 seconds. Okay, okay 90 give. seconds. Sorry, I was really excited. We were talking about food. Um, so I got all these awesome things that we use up here that they don't have. So, okay. Uh, I don't know if you're active, Larry. Think Thin Bars. Don't let the title fool you. They're peanut butter, and they're covered in chocolate, and there's 20 grams of protein. So if you're running around crazy like chefs do, and you don't have time to sit down and eat something with a fork, grab one of these. They're fantastic, and they will fill you up. Keeper pack. That's a keeper, for okay. sure. So far, you've it. kept everything, almost, uh, well. except for the potato ricer. So I'm doing pretty good. Okay, so um, and. Did you know that the number one New Year's resolution is to lose weight? So if you want to lose weight but still eat like a fat kid, no pudge fudge brownie mix. Can someone bring me that strong? Low part? fat, all you do is you add yogurt to it. It's really delicious. And there's a recipe if you want to make single servings. So you can spoon it into your own dish so you can have fresh brownies every day and not feel guilty. Keep it fast. Definitely keep. As, as someone who makes a New Year's resolution pretty much every year to lose a little bit of weight, I need that. So that's that's a keeper. Larry, we're going to be fast friends. I'm, okay, I'm going to go fast because I know you don't have much time. Okay, last thing. You get up in the morning and you don't have time for breakfast, and you know that I'm not going to make you breakfast because if you don't know, I'm the biggest crab ass in the morning. So anyways, we put these in the toaster morning rounds, right? And they fluff up, and they open like a pita, and there's an empty cavity. In there you can put... Almond butter, and they're single serving. So you don't have to get it out of the jar and get your spoon dirty, because remember, I'm late. But I'm going to So morning Sorry. rounds. That, that like, was the lemon. Oh, scones and pizza. That little pause. We're simulcasting. It's, it's, there's a simulcast going on, so therefore I came a little late. Never mind. Don't worry about that. Just know that that was Bill Evans' trio. That was Night and Day, and Chet Baker, and that uh, set as well, along with the Oscar Peterson trio. And that was Adley Blues. It's a special Monday edition of the Cocktail Hour here on KOM, Radio Without the Rules. Chicken Scratch Show is coming up in less than half an hour. Right now, quick break and more cocktail music coming up next. Oh, sorry about that. It's okay. So somebody's <laughs> got to work, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> would you, would, are you hungry? Can I make you a breakfast round, perhaps, with yeah, almond butter? So this, again, is a sconesy pita. Yeah, it's it's like it's like a fruit breakfast pita, I would say. So it's bread, but there's going to be a lot less gluten to it, right? So it's healthier for you. Oh, we're trying to lose weight, and you put it in the toaster, and it puffs up, and it gets warm and delicious. And there's a hole inside, a pocket like a pita. Oh, yeah, so yeah, you yeah. can put can see that. butter in there. Absolutely. You can put some of that applesauce that you made with your potato ricer. You can put this almond butter in there. Oh, it's all pretty that. fantastic. Larry hung up, so I think that's going. a pass. <laughs> so he'll be back. There he is. Oh, fantastic! Oh, good. It wasn't the breakfast yes. round. Yes. No. Okay. I think it's like the storm. Mm. So the storm of the century hit us last, or the at least. The I decade, would not go that hit far. Napa Valley. Um, it wasn't that bad. No. Um, so uh, for rained. those of you not here in, in Napa, it rained in California. It was called a Pineapple it Express. In yeah, the I know you told me that. Which I thought I was, was like, just a movie. The Pineapple Express. I know, I thought it was like Cheech and Chong or something. Right, exactly. Well, most people do. Yeah. So the Pineapple Express is an atmospheric river, right, that was 3,000 miles long, bringing moisture up from Hawaii. So that's where you get I the pineapple. And it was really up, fast. Yeah, from down so, um, in, in case you haven't been through one of those Stormageddon's, it rained, and it was wet, and that's pretty much all that happened. Yeah. At least for us. Yeah, it was constantly raining for like 24 hours, but, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's but about it. they definitely get more up there in Humboldt. Yeah. Yeah, no thunder, we no lightning. Gone, we have gone over our time in, uh, but here we have Larry coming back. 
he accept? Ooh, are we finally going to get to see Larry? I think, I think it just automatically. Anyway, um, so I guess that's the show. All that we have. Don't you think so? So thank you for joining us for not taking orders. Um, you've now spoiled Christmas for all of my family because they've now seen everything that they're going to get. But I don't care because I have a great holiday cocktail. So thank you to Larry Trapp. Thank oh, yeah. you, Kay Hum. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Doesn't Christina. this sound more like Thanksgiving now? It does. So Good. thankful. We're so thankful. Good. Have a great night. <laughs> Good night, everybody.